Oh, hi there. Michael Jackson was known as many things. A child star, dance icon, tabloid fascination, fashion pioneer, and of course, the king of pop. But a lesser known aspect of Jackson's life was that of an avid gamer. Jackson was frequently photographed at arcades or with his extensive arcade collection, and even touring game studios, as seen in this classic photo of him and Quincy Jones visiting Atari HQ in 1983. But his biggest gaming associate was with the then bad boys of the console wars. I said chocolate chip. Sega. In December 1988, near the end of his bad tour, Jackson visited the Sega offices, his first of many. Following this fateful meeting, Sega and Jackson struck a deal to get the king of pop into the gaming industry. The first game this collaboration produced was the 1990 cult classic Moonwalker. And even though it was released for three different systems of quality ranging from absurdly enjoyable to a PC version that is just terrible, Jackson and Sega would continue to collaborate. Michael would do some work on Sonic 3 that he was either removed from or walked away from, depending on who you ask, and left uncredited in the game. He would lend his voice and likeness to the 1999 game Space Channel 5 and its 2002 sequel. We need to save our galaxy, Yulala. Are you ready? But while his contributions to Sega are more or less common knowledge, there is one that has been shrouded in mystery, only existing in the memories of those who witnessed it firsthand decades ago. A game that until recently had been presumed lost. This is Michael Jackson's Scramble Training. Let's dance. Michael Jackson's Moonwalker video game, only on the tip. Sega World will represent an investment of 45... I'm Commander Jackson. Commence loading sequence. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. What do the world's most successful and productive people all have in common? They learn something new every day. And if you think that sounds too hard, too time consuming, or just too overwhelming, then you haven't tried Brilliant.org. Brilliant is the best way to learn math and computer science, offering thousands of lessons from foundational and advanced math to AI to data science to neural networks and more, with new lessons added monthly. Brilliant provides essential tools for professionals, giving users a hands-on approach to master key concepts behind today's tech and stay ahead of the curve, all presented in a way that is both educational and interesting. And I'll tell you, the way my little lizard brain lights up when the percentage complete total starts going up kept me hooked all while I was having a great time. Wherever you're at, they have lessons for you, from beginners to learn fundamentals all the way up to advanced courses. And these lessons are self-paced, allowing you to master entire topics in as little as 15 minutes a day. And it's even available on mobile and tablets, where you can download up to six courses at a time for offline use. I'm having a great time using Brilliant going through the logic and computer science courses. They do a really great job of setting you up for success, providing you with the tools you need to solve everything for yourself. And it feels so great to finally crack a tough problem. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash allthingslost or click on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Again, that's brilliant.org slash allthingslost. Sega was well known for giving Nintendo a run for their money in the 80s and 90s, but not content with just doing what Nintendo don't, Sega had the House of Mouse in their sights. Inspired by Disneyland Tokyo, Sega were attempting to set themselves as a competitor to Disney with their own brand of arcade amusement park hybrids, the most famous of which was Sega World. Sega had long been interested in amusement parks that grew as a natural extension of their arcades. And into the 90s, Sega were in their heyday. The groundwork they had set in previous decades was paying off, and the parks were a major hit in Japan, and eventually expanded worldwide. Keeping Sega ahead of the competition and on the cutting edge was AM5, also known known as Amusement Machine Research and Development Department 5. AM5 was one of the most influential divisions of Sega, particularly for their work on Sega's theme parks, being responsible for the creation of the AS1, Advanced Simulator 1. Of their many eye-catching attractions, this eight-seat interactive theme park ride video game movie hybrid of sorts was perhaps their most ambitious. A prototype experience running on the AS1 hardware was made called Sega Super Coaster. The game itself used a combination of pre-rendered 3D graphics, sprite overlays that players could control, all while the AS1 hardware would just really jostle you around to simulate the in-game motion. 
Super Coaster was briefly released for public testing in early 1992. The hardware was lauded for being easy to set up, assembling in about two hours, versus similar attractions that required major time investments, and for its affordable price that translated to reasonable prices for customers, usually costing only 500 yen or $4 per person. Super Coaster was a hit, but it was never meant for a wider release, and the project was replaced by the ride film Mugo. But even this attraction was short-lived because AM5 had a new, bigger project in the works. Mugo would be followed up with Scramble Training, an 8-minute interactive space film, part on-rail shooter, part spaceship simulator. The game had riders playing trainees piloting a futuristic spacecraft. It seemed like an ordinary training mission until a real battle breaks out and trainees are forced to act. While AM5 were putting the finishing touches on Scramble Training, Michael Jackson was on the Japanese leg of his dangerous world tour in December 1992, eventually making his way down to the AM5 team's development warehouse, where they let Jackson try out their new theme park attraction, the AS1 that was running an English version of Scramble Training. For real though, this setup is fire. 9 out of 10 needs more cup holders. Even though the game was far enough along to have an English translation, Jackson asked to be a part of it. And what are you going to do? Say no to the biggest pop star in the world? But Jackson made the offer irresistible by offering to do it for free, only asking that Sega cover some of the production costs. And because this all occurred just months away from the game's debut, Sega went ahead with its planned February 1993 release without Jackson, all while production on the new version moved forward. Michael Jackson in Scramble Training debuted in June 1993 at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. Jackson played the flight trainer, Commander Jackson, who guides the player through the mission. For his work, Jackson was gifted a Sega R360 simulator that became part of his arcade collection at Neverland Ranch, and Jackson would go on to briefly appear in a pre-show video for Sega's fourth and final game for the AS1, Megalopolis Tokyo City Battle. Sega would go on to expand their theme parks with locations in Taiwan, London, South Korea, Sydney, Las Vegas, and the AS1 was used in at least 21 arcades and amusement parks all around the world, some owned by Sega and others licensed out. Even though it appears that the games were only offered in English and Japanese, the AS1 became Sega World's signature attraction and served as the foundation for future rides. Everything was going great for both Sega and Jackson, but just months after the release of Scramble Training, Jackson would return to the Sega headquarters, this time to more or less sever ties with the company. Two months after the release of Scramble Training, news broke of Jackson's infamous abuse allegations. Sega distanced themselves from the pop star. It's been long held that the MJ version of Scramble Training was immediately discontinued, but this is not true. Of the at least 21 locations around the world to have an AS1, many offered Michael Jackson's Scramble Training well after the allegations. The scandal almost certainly limited the success of the game, but it did not end its spread. Jackson would settle the allegations out of court, and Sega would eventually work with Jackson again for the game Space Channel 5 in 1999 and its 2002 sequel. But because of the constantly changing nature of theme parks and arcades, the AS1 was phased out through the 90s and early 2000s. So the game wasn't cancelled, but it still only received a small, brief release. That, combined with the poor overall sales of the AS1, Scramble Training made way for new games. The game became a legend, only surviving in amateur camcorder uploads often mislabeled on YouTube, some minor press coverage, and in the memories of those who experienced it. But it wasn't completely forgotten either. Diehard fans long sought after ports of Scramble Training and Megapolis for the Sega Mega Drive that has been confirmed to have never existed. Sega have expressed no interest in porting the game, releasing the files, or preserving Scramble Training in any way. And that's where the game would sit for the next two decades. And it might not have had a happy ending if it wasn't for some tremendous luck. In the summer of 2022, video game collector Ben Bisley was perusing a car boot sale in the UK, which is basically a flea market where the vendors sell out of the back of their cars, when he met up with a seller trying to offload some Sega gear. In Ben's own words, he had some Sega merchandise he had got from a gentleman whose father, a former Sega employee, had recently passed away. I bought some promo posters and toys, but after I left, he sent me pictures of a D2 tape he forgot to mention he'd paid a fair bit for. This tape was labeled Sega AS1. M. Jackson version. It was mainly instinct, really a bit of a blind buy, as I had not seen anything like it before. I had to fork over about 300 euros in order to get the purchase over the line. 
Ben didn't know exactly what he had and had no way of playing a D2 tape, so he posted it to various Facebook gaming groups, hoping to find some answers. Eventually, another collector, Nick Greenfield, identified it as a tape used in the AS1 simulator at Sega World. I was scrolling through the posts in the Galaxy Sega Facebook group when Ben popped up to tell us he'd bought the tape at a car boot sale, but had no idea what it was. Some other people in the comments clocked the AS1, but I seemed to be the only one who knew what he might have found. I'd seen footage that exist, but the nature of the ride meant that none of the vids were complete. Ben Bisley and Nick Greenfield immediately sought to get the tapes digitized, which turned out to be more difficult than expected. The only people who were able to help were the Oxford Duplication Center, and after weeks of work and 100 plus quid, they got the tape back. And at this point, they still didn't even know exactly what they had. They knew they didn't have a playable experience, but they theorized it could be promotional material for TV, test footage, outtakes, but whatever it was, they knew they had to preserve it. And the tape had even more than they expected. Full production credits, sound and visual tests, and all video variations based on your choices during the ride, starring none other than Michael Jackson. They had discovered the entirety of the Scramble training film. And even with everything they've discovered, the origins of the tape still remain a mystery. The tape is dated 31-5-1996. This is in European, so through some advanced calculations, I decoded the runic message, translating it to May 31st, 1996. There are currently two theories. One, that the tape was sent to Sega World London for promotional usage for its 1996 opening, or two, that it was meant for the Sega World Paris location that was in development in 1996, but ultimately canceled in 2001. And even though this is an exceptional discovery, there are still many parts of the scramble training experience that are lost. Their copy did not include any of the sprite overlays for the interactive portion of the ride, along with the motion data, nor does it have the introductory video that played on a monitor outside of the ride, starring Michael Jackson. And along with the missing elements of scramble training, all of the other games made for the AS1 either have not been preserved or are lacking adequate documentation. And as far as the AS1 machine itself, the system has long been obsolete. Unbelievably, there have been sightings of a modified AS1 still functioning in Australia, and of all places, Places, there is a listing for an AS1 machine being sold in Ukraine, listed for about 2,000 euros, that was posted from 2019 to 2021, that likely went unpurchased. But even if it was bought, the pictures of the AS1 show it has been damaged, likely beyond repair. Despite these small glimmers of hope, it appears that the days of the full AS1 experience and its small but innovative library of games are lost to time save for one machine carrying the entire legacy of Sega's AM5 development team and the AS1, available for anyone who can make their way to Australia. Thank you so much for watching. This is such an intriguing topic to me. Let me know if there are any other interesting topics you want me to cover or any interesting discoveries that you want me to talk more about. Big shout out to all of my Patreon supporters. This is Mike with All Things Lost. See you soon.